Good afternoon, everybody. It's Milton here from ZMed and welcome to our Lunch and Learn, specifically dedicated to the phase 1B of the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Um, no doubt you've all been inundated with uh, patient inquiries about when and if they can have the vaccine at your practice. And today's session should um, uh, certainly enable you to set up your practice accordingly to be able to administer the vaccine if you are intending to do so. Uh, session today should take about uh, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and we are also recording this session, which we'll make publicly available to you if you did need to refer to it moving forward. Um, couple of things, just some, ha uh, just some general housekeeping. Um, there is a side panel um, that you all have access to uh, via the GoTo training uh, system. May I ask that you all on mute? We have a quite a large um, uh, attendance today. Um, so muting your microphones will certainly um, uh, aid in the uh, session. Uh, in addition to that, if you do have some questions, and we certainly do encourage questions, um, are you able to use the chat function in the toolbar? Uh, our intention here, um, given the large amount of attendees, is to uh, collate all of the questions at the end of the session, and we'll push out a um, an email with all of the questions that have been answered and some answers for them as well, and they'll in turn act as some um, FAQs. Um, without any further ado, let's kick it off and go through um, our agenda. So today we're going to have a look at specifically our latest version, version 33.6, which has been um, upgraded to enable you to uh, successfully administer the COVID-19 vaccination in your practice. We'll then take a deep dive into this, the proposed or suggested COVID-19 workflow, which we encourage you to adapt in your practice, um, and we'll show you how to do that as far as the practice setup goes. Uh, once we get through the changes and the, um, the how-tos, we'll actually do a live demonstration and just show you how it's physically done in ZMED, um, and, then, um, and then obviously um, we can um, talk about next steps at the end of this session. So in relation to version 33.6, we've got some, um, some updates. Obviously, we have incorporated all of the COVID-19 uh, item numbers um, and MBS fees there. So uh, given that there are so many of them, we, um, we have updated that system to reflect uh, the different item numbers that are available to you. Um, in addition to that, we, have, we are now introducing our new stock management module, which, has, um, which is being launched uh, uh, preliminary for COVID-19 only. Uh, we anticipate in the next few weeks that the stock management um, module will be available for you to use throughout your practice for um, other items as well. But at this initial stage, it will be only relevant for COVID-19 vaccination. Um, it will support um, in its full form, multi-dose vials, and it also enable you to track the vaccine vials by batch number and expiry date. Um, in addition to that, you will be able to produce a reorder list when stock gets low um, and then manually adjust the stock levels uh, to reflect a movement between um, stock and a treating room, for example. Um, and um, when it um, is in its full uh, version, which would be in the next couple of uh, days, or uh, we will also have an integration with our AIR reporting to uh, eliminate double handling. So as we as we um, administer the vaccination, it will update our stock management module as well. Uh, but we will cover that off in more detail as we go through this training session. Uh, we've developed a recommended COVID-19 workflow in ZMED um, right through from the way that we're setting up our branch to the way that the administrators of the uh, vaccine will also be set up in ZMED. Uh, we've tweaked the way that we um, schedule uh, our COVID-19 uh, appointments um, and uh, we'll also look at the way that we manage our patients uh, from attendance to follow-up appointments throughout the process as well. Uh, we'll also touch physically uh, on the administration of the vaccine and, and, and show you how that um, works within ZMED, how we generate uh, a billing and follow-up appointments, and then obviously uh, look at how we transmit that information across to the Australian Immunisation Register. Let's start with creating a dedicated COVID-19 branch. So at the moment, um, this role will primarily lie with the practice management management or, uh, uh, or a ZMED dedicated administrator, but essentially 
we, f we feel that the recommended way to treat COVID-19 um, immunizations at your practice is to create a dedicated COVID-19 branch. Uh, to do that, we go into practice setup, we choose branches and then select a new branch. Um, once we've established our new COVID-19 branch, uh, it is important that we restart ZMED. As uh, most of you would know, each time we create or amend a branch within ZMED, it will require an, uh, an activation uh, via our say, support team. Um, this is the branch also that your online booking system would advertise to the National Health Services Directory. So coming up with a name um, that reflects uh, your practice name followed by the COVID-19 branch would be ideal. And we'll look at that a little bit later on in the practical uh, component of this session. Uh, once we've done that, in addition uh, to setting up a new branch, we also need to establish who the people in your practice uh, uh, will be that are actually administering the vaccine. Um, and that might be a, a, a nurse or a, a treating doctor. So again, this, uh, this task lies uh, primarily with the practice manage manager or administrator of the ZMED system in your practice. And we'll need to go back into practice setup uh, under the doctor's field, find a treating doctor. And we firstly search for either a doctor or a nurse by family name, and if need be, um, we, it, we will also create a new profile if required. So typically, we recommend this step for any nurse that is administering the vaccine. Uh, typically, they won't be set up as a doctor, but we recommend that you set up a doctor profile for each nurse that is um, administering the vaccine. Uh, from uh, my understanding, uh, you will need one supervising doctor um, for the COVID branch, and primarily most practices will be relying on the services of a nurse for the actual administration. Um, as, um, as mentioned, once we have created our COVID-19 dedicated branch and we uh, uh, create a, uh, a new a doctor or nurse, we would need to link them to this particular branch, which then gives us the opportunity to create a dedicated COVID-19 schedule for each person involved in that branch. To do this, there are a few steps, three main ones. The first one is that we create a new activity type. So in the practice setup, we choose appointments and activity types and we create a new COVID-19 vaccination activity type. From this point forward, we go in and, and set up a dedicated COVID-19 vaccination appointment type. And you have the ability now to, um, to um, set appointment durations below the uh, original five minute uh, a duration that was previously available in ZMED. So you can select anything from a one minute, two minute, et cetera, et cetera. So anything below five minutes is now also incorporated in our latest version. Um, it is also advisable that you set up more than one COVID-19 vaccination appointment type, uh, potentially to reflect uh, a second dose. So you might have one for uh, dose one, one for dose two, and then potentially even a third one for a COVID-19 um, doctor consult if required. Uh, the third part in the process of setting up a schedule is to create the actual schedule. And again, we go back into practice setup, we choose appointments and schedules, and then we create a new schedule for, our, for every treating doctor or nurse that is linked to this COVID-19 branch so that we can effectively book appointments straight into this uh, new schedule. Um, a couple of tweaks here in relation to the way that we attend and admit patients as they arrive into the practice. So. Um, for the role of reception, uh, the change, there's not much that's changed here. Uh, the reception staff will still confirm patient details are up to date and they will complete an online Medicare uh, validation. They will then go into the appointment book, select the patient from the appointment book, right click on the appointment and select the attend. Um, now, depending on the on the role, if it's a treating doctor that's administering the vaccine, they will be able to admit the patient directly from their waiting room in ZMED Clinical. However, if we have nurses um, administering the vaccine, they would need to use the waiting room in ZMED office and right click on the patient and select admit that way, and then physically open that patient profile in ZMED Clinical. Recording the vaccination in ZMED is quite straightforward and, it, and, and there's not too many changes in relation to uh, a COVID-19 vaccination or a regular vaccination at this stage. Uh, there, there is um, talk about capturing serial numbers um, for COVID 
COVID-19 vaccinations moving forward. However, that process is exempt for phase 1B. We will only need to uh, ensure that the batch number is captured. So um, to, to actually uh, record the vaccination, um, you would start the encounter uh, by pressing the start encounter button once you've opened up the patient file in clinical, select the immunizations module, and then choose add to enter the details of the vaccine. And now update all the fills as, as required. Um, at this point in time, you do have the ability to add a recall. If you wanted to use the recall system to manage any um, second dose appointments in, in 12 weeks. Um, and then once, once complete, you would stop the encounter um, and uh, move on to your next patient. Bulk billing patients for the vaccine remains exactly the same in version 33.6 as it does in previous versions. Uh, the points to, to, to note here are that the, the, that the payer must be set to Medicare and that the uh, service is billed in the name of the supervising doctor. And that's probably a critical point to remember. Uh, otherwise, if you do select the nurse as the treating doctor, that claim will be rejected by Medicare. Uh, once we've created the bill, we suppress the invoice and then batch and transmit the uh, payment across to Medicare as per the normal procedures. Uh, rebooking um, appointments for the second dose is quite straightforward and there are two options. I mentioned before, if you're using the recall system, um, you would simply um, add that recall at the time of the vaccination and our reception staff or the nursing staff would use the management tab, reports and recalls to then run reports to either SMS, call or write to patients in relation to their second dose appointments and book those in as, 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 um, as a response is received. Uh, alternatively, some practices have decided it might, it, might, it might be a little bit easier just to rebook patients in before they leave the practice on that day, where in, if that's the case, uh, reception staff can just simply book in an appointment 12 weeks in advance um, and get that locked in uh, for their second dose. Uh, the Australian Immunisation Register, uh, the ruling here is that we must upload the information uh, regarding the vaccinations provided at your practice within two business days. Um, and all, all immunizations that are captured in the clin clinical immunizations module will be automatically queued for this transmission. So it's really just a matter of allocating somebody in your practice that will take the responsibility, whether it be intermittently throughout the day or at the end of the day, to physically transmit that information across to the um, Australian Immunization Register. Um, and as you can see here, to do that, you'll see a listing of all the vaccinations provided for that for your COVID-19 branch, and you will simply click on transmit pending to AIR. Uh, typically, the uh, the errors that we uh, we experience uh, whilst transmitting to AIR um, can be avoided if reception staff take the time initially to make sure that the patient's uh, demographic information is up to date and their Medicare card has been validated to ensure that they are in fact eligible for that service. Um, at this point, I'd like to step you through it just to show you what it looks like in, in, um, in a live environment. So bear with me while I open up my my screen. Okay, so the first step that I'd, I'll take you through is setting up a new branch or a new COVID branch in your practice. To do that, we simply go into in clinical, assuming that you've got the correct permissions, you'll be able to go into management, select practice setup and choose branches. At this point in time, and you can see I've already set one up, but I'll do an, a, a new one just to um, demonstrate it. We'll click on add new. The recommendation is that we give it a name uh, that captures the name of your practice. So let's call it Medical One um, Melbourne. COVID-19 branch. Um, the branch type can be marked as a general. Um, address details need to be pop put in. And once we've done that, um, you'll need to give it a unique code. And that code can be um, three characters of your liking, 
essentially we're just using COV at this stage. Once we've entered all of the information, what's important is that you click on this options um, uh, button at the bottom of the screen and enable your stock management system. And this is the link that will enable you to talk to that stock ma uh, management module, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. Um, at this point in time, I just close this and save my changes. I would need to exit ZMED and contact our support team at this stage, where a database activation code will be issued to you for you to validate this new branch that we've set up. Um, if you don't do this step, um, uh, the next time you log out of ZMED, it will not let you proceed until you get the activation code. From this point in time, the other, the other, um, we would move on to our provider setup. And to do this, we would make sure that we um, have the appropriate staff that are dispensing the, um, or, or administering the vaccination set up in the system. Again, we go into management, practice setup. We go into our doctor's field, find our treating doctors, um, and we'll search for a particular doctor. In this case, we've got Philip Davis, and we would make sure that they are linked to the COVID-19 branch. Now, until you validate or activate your, your branch via our support team, you will not see the new branch that you've created displayed in this branch, so hence why it's important to do that immediately. Um, so I've selected a doctor in this case and linked them to the COVID-19 branch. Uh, we would do the same for a nurse. If we are using nurses to administer the vaccine, we would go in and create that nurse in this section as a treating doctor as well. Um, you would obviously omit any provider numbers, etc., but at the very least capture their name, uh, details, and just again, link them to the COVID-19 branch. Creating schedules are quite easy in ZMED as well. We do that again via our management tab, practice setup, and this time we go down to appointments. The very first step is to create an activity type. To create a new activity type, we simply create new, and you might do COVID-19 vaccination. Um, you can set a color for the text, and I might leave that as white, and a background color as well, give it a nice orange color here, and we close that. Now you can see that we've created an activity type. Step number two would be to go back into practice setup, into appointments again, and this time set up your COVID-19 appointment types. To do that, we do it in exactly the same way. We click on you, give it a name, and in this case, we might do dose one, for example, give it a code, COVID dose one. And this is the duration that I spoke to you about. In the, in the past, we could only uh, make the minimum duration um, uh, five minutes, but you, you do now have the ability to go, to go down beyond that as well. And you can see that I've pre, pre uh, set up some appointment types. I've got COVID-19 number one, number two, and a COVID-19 consult if required as well. Uh, establishing schedules for each individual is, is quite simple as well. Again, we're going to practice setup. We choose our appointment tab and look at the schedules. Um, you choose the treating doctor. In this case, we'll choose um, David uh, Philip Davis. And what's important is that you um, that you've got the right branch allocated. In this case, you can see I've got the COVID-19 branch. Um, easiest way to create a schedule, in my opinion, is to use this graphic display feature and you can simply double click where you'd like to place um, availability um, and select the activity type that we set up before. And in this case, it would be COVID-19 vaccination. So as you can see, I'm creating a schedule for a couple of hours and that's created there. From this point forward, rather than double clicking and creating a schedule on each individual day, I have the ability to simply right click, copy this, um, schedule and paste it in any field um, that I'd like to and edit by double clicking if, if required. Okay, so once I've completed those three steps, if we go, if we have a look at the system, you'll see that I have built some schedules 
for the COVID-19 branch. Um, and in addition to that, I've got, um, we've also set up a couple of, um, a couple of doctors and a couple of treatment rooms as well. And, um, and because we've, we've got quite small appointment slots, it is advisable that you zoom in on the view just to make it um, easier to, to read. Um, attending patients as well. Um, if we were to look at a particular appointment, and I think we've got some appointments in here, um, assuming, let's work off this one here, the patient arrives, reception staff validate that information, they will complete a, a um, online PV, and for those of you that don't know what that is, uh, once they've validated the, the, uh, the information, they will come down to the bottom of the screen and hit online PV, and it will go across to Medicare, and it will make sure that they are eligible for that particular service. Once we've done that, and we have success in that, in that aspect, we'll go back into the appointment book, and we would right click and attend this patient. Now, once the patient is attended, depending on who is administering the vaccine, if it was a nurse, the nurse would pick up this patient from the waiting room located in the ZMED office module. So by clicking on the waiting room, the nurse would be able to right click and, and choose admit. And you can see that once I've done that, I have an updated um, attendance time, admit time, and my doctor uh, code has been updated with the, uh, the uh, person that's administering the vaccine. Assuming that I'm a nurse, I'd have to open up this patient in, in ZMED Clinical, and I have to remember what their name was, uh, Brian Alexander. So I would simply in clinical, open up the patient. And once I've loaded my patient file, I would need to start the encounter using the green play button. select our immunizations module, which is the big syringe at the top of the screen. Select add to add an immunization. Ensure that the branch, the appropriate branch is selected, COVID-19. Your name should, um, the name of the doctor should be here. And the vaccine has already been entered in to our list of vaccinations. You can, um, you can simply type in a, a letter to bring it up, and I think it's C for COVID. And you can see here, we've got the COVID-19 vaccine AstraZeneca. Um, the date given will always default with today's date, unless you're catching up on some work and it was, um, and it was given uh, uh, you know, uh, earlier on, you can change that date to reflect that. Um, the dose is either going to be dose one or dose two. We'll use dose one at the moment. The batch number needs to be entered here. The site that you've, um, and once you've, sorry, I do apologize, but once you've entered the batch number, if you are using that batch um, for future patients, you can actually store it as well. The site that you've administered the, uh, the vaccination, the route, and any relevant comments that you'd like to capture as well. From this point forward, we can also add a recall um, for the, for the follow-up appointment, and we have updated our recall to include COVID-19 as well. Let's just update the maturity date, which uh, we'll, we've calculated at a, at a future date that, um, of, of, uh, of a month in this case. Okay. Um, once we've done that, we hit OK and close this module down. And what you'll see is that the system has automatically captured that immunization in our encounter, um, uh, made a, a notation of the time spent with the patient, and also updated our summary view with the AstraZeneca vaccine. At this point forward, we would stop the encounter. And, um, and that would be the end of the consultation. Um, as far as as far as billing goes, I did mention to you before that 
the billing aspect does not change for um, reception staff. They will um, identify the item number that is relevant. Um, and no doubt you've seen the relevant item numbers um, that are available for the COVID vaccination, depending on the dose that you're administering, who's administering it, and the time, whether it's an um, during office hours or out of office hours, um, and they would simply be um, entered into the build, into the bill, sorry, and um, bulk billed across to Medicare. Uh, now I will show you the Australian Immunisation Register. So again depending on your role within your practice, you might be responsible for transmitting this information across. You simply go into management, click on air, and you'll see that every vaccination that we have administered for that particular day will be sitting here um, pending with a claim status of pending. And that means obviously pending a transmission across to air. To transmit, we simply click on the button at the bottom and it won't work in this state case because it's only a test patient and that will uh, immediately update the status of that transmission. Um, and it will more than likely uh, not go through because I don't have any uh, certificates loaded. Uh, you'll see immediately if the um, immunizations have been successfully transmitted uh, with a green tick. If they do fail, you will get a, a notification of that failure as well. And that's where we'll have to investigate as to why that failure um, uh, occurred and it might be um, either the nurse was selected uh, as a treating doctor instead of um, the, the uh, supervising doctor or it may be something to do with the uh, credentials of the patient that we would need to um, update before transmitting again. All right now I think it's time that we have a look at this stock management piece which is quite new to ZMED. Um, it is a work in progress and um, and um, it is something that will be um, fully operational in the coming days um, that'll, that'll enable you to manage stock for items beyond um, the COVID-19 vaccine. But at the very least, you do have the ability to um, ad, um, update the stock management module with deliveries of the vaccine and then allocate vaccines out of the stock management module as they, they are being utilised. The second phase of this in a couple of days will automate a lot of that process for you uh, based on the item numbers that we select. Um, but in, in the interim, it, it, is, um, it is available to you to use manually. Uh, to use the stock management module, the very first place we start is by adding a supplier. So by clicking on supplier, we can uh, we can basically just pop in a name there and we'll use CSL, pop in the um, information that you have about from the vendor, any email or contact name would go in there as well. And we save that. From that point forward, once we've added every supplier that we potentially will be ordering the vaccine from, we can go in and add the vaccine as a product. So you can call it the Astra um, Zeneca COVID vaccine. Um, the category is vaccines, and I'll show you where we can set up categories. So as as we progress with the uh, the version and we and provide full functionality for stock management, if you were, for example, ma um, um, managing your stock levels on um, wound dressings, or if you are you know uh, hearing aids, if you're an audiologist, you would create a separate category for this particular um, product. Uh, the brand is an optional field. In this case, it happens to be the name of the product as well, but we can um, update that if required, and then you can set a reorder threshold. And this reorder threshold um, is what triggers off the reporting to advise you when to reorder uh, more stock. So in this case, we might put um, 100. The associated suppliers, um, the way that we update this field here is by selecting our supplier. And you can see I've got two available suppliers here. I'm gonna choose CSL, and then I'm gonna choose add to actually add that supplier. If you have more than one, you'll simply go in and choose um, um, more than one. But in addition to that, we will also nominate a preferred supplier. And in this case, we'll make CSL our preferred supplier. Um, 
at the moment, we have the ability to only adjust manually, but moving forward, you'll have the, the system will have the capability of adjusting your stock based on a bill. So when we generate an item number, it will reduce the stock or an immunization. So when we issue an immunization, it will be able to go in and adjust the, the stock level uh, and, and decrease that accordingly. For each product type, you can also specify whether you want to capture a batch number, which is obviously important for a vaccination, as is an expiry date, and whether this particular product is an active product. Okay. Once we've completed that information, we can capture any notes as well, and then save that. So from a process perspective, um, what you, um, and you can see we've got some test products here, but we'll look at the one that we've just created down the bottom, the AstraZeneca COVID vaccine. You can see that we have um, we have uh, this little truck image, and next to that in blue writing, we have a zero, and that indicates our current stock balance. In addition to that, you can see we've set our reorder threshold to set at 100. Uh, when a delivery does come into your practice, the way that you capture that into the stock management module is by clicking on this little truck icon, and you can um, update that in um, the order code if you have a, a PO or an order code or a shipment number in there. Uh, otherwise, you can leave it blank. The date you've received the order, the amount of stock that you've received. Uh, if there was a cost, you can actually specify the cost per unit, but we do know in this case it's free. Uh, update the batch number and the expiry date of the, this, this batch. If you did have multiple batch numbers, with multiple, with, diff, with varying expiry dates, you would um, treat them separately. But in, um, um, so you would, let's say you had 100 with this particular batch number, you would do, do 100 now, save it, and then go back in and add, and add another 100 as well. And obviously we choose the supplier it came in from. Once we save that information, you can see that we've updated now our, our stock management to reflect 200 units of the COVID vaccine. Um, and we know that's what we have on hand. To manually adjust, and you might, you will be manually adjusting for a couple of various reasons. For example, if you were moving stock from the stock management system across to a treatment room, you would decrease the stock manually by choosing either this little minus sign. Um, and you could do a manual decrease, and you could say, I'm moving 50 units from this batch with this expiry date and save that information. Whoops, what have I done wrong here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A stock group matching for row, come on. Okay, so what, um, it could be that I'm entering the wrong batch number in. To check that information, if we click on our product and look at our stock history, you can see the reason I had that error message was because the batch number that I had selected originally was only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if you find um, that you can't remember the batch number, just go back into the product and look at the stock history to confirm that batch number and expiry date. So now that I have that information, I can go back in and move the stock across. I will move 50 across to a treatment room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, with an expiry date of the 31st of March. Once that's done and I save that information, you can see that it's reduced the stock by 150. Um, other reasons uh, that we, predetermined reasons that we've included into the system uh, include stock received if you were increasing. Um, you could do a, a manual increase, a manual decrease, which is what I've just done. But also if you've had shrinkage, if something's expired, returned or, or used for immunisation, you would use those, um, those specific um, uh, pre, predetermined um, uh, reason codes. And I'll show you how to add those in just a moment, additional ones. Um, so 
in addition to that, if I was to reduce the stock, if the stock was uh, being reduced by le uh, um, by another, say, we'll do 55 this time, and we'll do, it's gone out for immunisation, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the expiry date being the 31st, save that information. You can see now that we have currently on hand, we have less stock than what our reorder threshold is advising us. I can run this reorder report and it will actually go through each specific product that requires um, a, a reorder. So in this case, you can see that first uh, product name, our AstraZeneca COVID vaccination um, is currently um, under by five and we would be able to then contact CSL um, or our supplier and, and, and order more stock. Okay, that report will only be available to you once a particular product has less than the threshold, reorder threshold requirement. Okay. Um, now, if I go back into my ZMED, a couple of setup options that will enable you to create the stock management module and customize it to your to your liking uh, live in our practice setup and in our drop down list management. So the first, if we go down to the last one, that stock movement reason that I spoke to you about, these are the predetermined ones. You can add more values. So um, so out to treatment room might be one. Um, and that way, next time when I decrease the stock, I can select out to treatment room. I'll, I'll uh, in addition to that, you might have uh, in from treatment room, depending on what your process is like at your practice, if they are to come back to a central point at the end of the day, are stored somewhere, or if that treatment room isn't being used uh, or has any scheduled appointments um, the following day, and they need to return to a central point, you would increase from the treatment room, for example. If I go back to uh, our drop down list management, the other item. Um, that you might want to look at is product category. So we have created an, an, at this stage a vaccine product category. Uh, later on, when the um, when when the stock management mod module is um, uh, fully functional, you this is where you'll be able to create additional product categories to include things like wound dressings, to include things like um, you know. Um, uh, glasses, frames, hearing aids, whatever it is that um, that you need to manage stock on, compression stockings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's pretty much the, um, our recommendation on setting up um, uh, your COVID-19 branch. Um, in addition to that, what we're, what we're uh, changing in the next couple of days to, to assist you is we've increased our support hours to, to include um, uh, additional support um, over the weekend as well. So I believe that we are working um, with additional resources uh, today, tomorrow, and uh, full business day on Saturday. Uh, and that is because we, uh, in order to um, get this uh, set up and running, you will need to update to version 33.6. Um, so we're more than happy to book in a scheduled upgrade with you. Um, just give our support team a call on 1300 933 000, and they will be able to work at a suitable time where we can assist you with that upgrade. Naturally, a lot of you are experienced with upgrades and you are welcome to upgrade uh, independently to ZMED um, if you have the capability to do so. Post this session, as I mentioned, I have been recording this session. We will we will push out the recording or make it publicly available to you. Together with any questions that you might have uh, filtered through this session, we will certainly answer them. Uh, and there will also be links to all of the how-to guides on all of the relevant steps that we've um, discussed today. Um, so that if you do, um, if you do need some um, uh, prodding, you can certainly refer back to a how-to guide and, um, and, and, um, and, and follow um, the steps there. Um, in addition to that, for those of you that don't already have client um, portal access, all of our help uh, self-help guides are contained on our website under the um, both the health help section, but also in our dedicated client 
uh, login area, uh, which um, um, are a lot more detailed. Uh, if you don't have access to the client login area, I encourage you to create an account Account by clicking request an account via our website and you receive um, access um, within an hour or so and that'll give you access to all of our manuals and how-to guides uh, which will make your life uh, a lot easier. So uh, on that note I might just uh, wrap it up and thank you all for attending today. I hope you got some value out of today's session and uh, happy immunizing. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.